What's up guys, welcome to another fishing video. Today we're at evic.com and we're doing a different video. Uh, due to popular demand, a lot of you guys asked me on my last video what kind of setups I was using, what kind of jigs I was using, uh, line, rods, reels. So I decided to just come to evic.com and um, just film their selection. So special thanks to evic for letting me film in their store. And before we get started, if you guys haven't already, click the like button, subscribe, and uh, let me know down in the comment section below what kind of setups are you using to catch bluefin tuna? Because, you know, my setup works, your setup works. I want to see what uh, everyone else is doing. So leave a comment down below and let me know. First off, we're going to start off with rod and reel setups. I have in front of me a setup that I use a lot. You guys definitely seen this reel in my videos. A lot of you guys always ask me about this uh, colorway. So this is the reel that I've been using, the Maxell Transformer F70 and it has an upgraded lever handle. It doesn't really come stock with this, but you can definitely add it on. It's quite expensive to add this on. I wouldn't recommend doing it if, uh, if you want something more budget friendly. You can find stuff from Jigging Master and evic.com sells it. You can find a Jigging Master shaft and the, and the handle. It just replaced the whole thing and it comes out to like around like 140 bucks, something like that, if you want to redo the entire side. So I would definitely try to pick one up. It's definitely rare to get in America though. The transformer isn't really sold in America, so you might have to go on eBay for this one. But I have this paired on a Phoenix Megalodon 608. This rod is really good because it has a lot of bend into it and it works the jig pretty well because the tip's soft, but it has enough backbone where you can pull on fish. But a lot of the times when you're fighting fish with these setups, you're just pointing and pulling. If you see in my videos, you might see me using my elbow a little or like using the tip of my foregrip on the rail. And you can do that too. Second up, we have the Monster Game P8 with the Three Kings 60BH rod. This is another setup that I use a lot. And last trip, this was uh, one of the setups I used the most inside the video. It was, I normally just cycle between these two setups, but I do use other rods and reels. But these are my, uh, these are my favorite. The 60BH, it's a little stiff. I was just talking about fishing a parabolic rod, but if you want something that can definitely handle larger fish if they come through and you want to be able to put the rod in your hip or just have a stiff rod, the 60BH offers a really nice option for you to get that heavy nighttime setup. And I have it on a Monster Game P8. The P8 is bigger than the Maxo Transformer. This reel holds like around like 100 more yards of um, 85 pound test and that's what I spool both my reels with 85 pound test. You could definitely put 112 pound test on here, but with 112 pound, I would save it for your heaviest setup. So if you only have one setup, then um, I have it, I have 85 pound test on my P8. If you have multiple setups and you have a dedicated medium setup and a heavy setup, I would definitely spool the 112. But the thing that I've noticed is the 112, it's harder to work with and it drags a little more water. So you can get away with fishing lighter line, it benefits you good. And the reason why I'm giving you guys weird pound test rating is because I'm going off the Veravas 10x10 system. Their, um, their line goes in PE ratings. In Asia, they do the PE6, PE8, like P10 line. PE just goes by diameter, it's not really pound test. So you're gonna get different manufacturers that give you PE6 line, but then the line breaks at 90. And you're gonna have some manufacturers that give you line and it breaks at like 80. It's all, uh, it all is like give or take, but going by diameter, you can know for sure that if I give you P6 line, you know how much line you can, how much yardage you can fit on your reel. That's pretty much why they do it. This is the third setup that I would recommend. This is a PE5 with a uh, light rod. This rod right here happens to be the Three Kings Special 56B Lite. They don't actually make this rod yet, but when they do, it's a good option for your light setup. Um, light doesn't necessarily mean daytime. Sometimes the fish at night are pretty high up on the water column. They're small schoolie size where you need to be using smaller jigs and that's where the lighter rod comes in. Uh, you can definitely pull big fish using this reel because the PE5 has 60 pounds of drag and the PE8 and the Maxell, they, the PE8 has more drag than the Maxell, but they're all around like the 70 to 60 to 50 pound uh, max drag range. So you're definitely not going to get max out on any of these reels. If you put 85 pound test on these reels, you can definitely put enough drag to put major pressure on these fish. So don't let the small size fool you. If you know that the fish are going to be in that smaller range anyways, and you're going to be using smaller jigs, using a lighter rod just gives more action to the jig and it's just easier on your body. Using a lighter action rod versus a heavier action rod, it, uh, it's easier to work the jig. 
So before we go over to the rods, I would like to mention something about the reels. Right here we have a bunch of the monster games by Jiggy Master. Uh, right here we have all the P5s I was talking about for your light setups, and then you got the P7s right here, which is the narrow version of the P8. And then we have the P8, which is the largest reel that they manufacture. They do make the P10, but it's a power spell and it's discontinued. So sometimes uh, Jiggy Master brings it back, but most of the time, if you want something that's dependable that you can go out and probably buy right now, the best bet for you is probably gonna be the P8. So to start off on a rod selection, I picked out some UC rods to look at. This one right here is uh, the heaviest UC rod that I'd recommend is the 6005. If you want something for your heavy setup, this one has like a lot of backbone in it. So you can definitely uh, pull on some larger fish. You can go with a 6006 as well, but going back to my point where I like parabolic rods, I would definitely recommend pulling on it and seeing if you guys like it yourself. But this is just based on my honest uh, recommendation. Is the 6005, have that as your heavy setup. Get the 6004, which is this one, and have that for your medium setup. You can get the 6003 and have this as your light setup. You can definitely find these 310 rod works. They're CXJs, they're Zeus's, and they're building it for a very reasonable and affordable price. So another really good rod manufacturer is Black Hole. They have a lot of nanocarbon technology, so they can make really thin blanks that have a lot of flex and a lot of backbone. This is the 450 in the built version. If you want a longer rod, because this is 5.2, if you want a longer rod, they do make blanks in six foot long sections, but you're gonna have to get it custom made. All their, uh, all their pre built factory rods all come in 5'2, 5'4, 5'6, depending on the action of the rod. So the 450 gram, which is their second to heaviest setup, comes factory in a 5'2. They also make the 550 gram uh, Cape Cod. I don't have it with me right now, they're sold out but that's a really good option if you have something like a PE10 or just a really large reel and you want to pull on big fish. They actually designed it to be a six foot rod, so there's a lot of nanocarbon in it, the most nanocarbon that they put on any of the rods. So it's really thin and it's really light. If you guys get a chance to pull on the 550, I would definitely do it. It's a really cool rod, but 450 is a good rod too. This would be your heavy setup. Right here, I have the 350 gram blank. And this one would be really good for your medium setup. If you had a P8, you can either put a P8 on a 450 or you can put a P8 on a 350 or you can have this as your P7 rod and put a P7 on there. So a lot of possibilities with the Black Hole 350. Here's your light setup for the Cape Cod 250. For your light setup, you don't actually are limited to the P5. I know a lot of guys that put a P7 on their 250 gram Cape Cod. So you have a lot of option to um, pick out a different reels for your rods. You don't actually have to go by my recommendation. But if you want something that can pull on big fish and have a lot of capacity, put a P7 on this rod or any of the light rods that I mentioned and you're gonna have a lot of line capacity, a lot of drag, a lot of pulling power and you're just gonna feel more confident on bringing these larger fish in. But the 250 gram Cape Cod is something that's really proven. A lot of guys have been catching big fish this year on the 250 gram Cape Cod. So pull on that too. And you can see that the, there's a lot of tip action on here with a lot of backbone. So a really solid light rod. And let's go move on to the next rod manufacturer because we got two more that I want to mention. So next up on the rods that I'd recommend are Phoenix Megalodons. Right here for your light setup, I have the Megalodon 607. This would be your light setup. You can put a P5 on here, you can put a P7. Like I said with the black holes, you can put a different range of reels on there. I'm just giving you guidelines. You can do P5 if you want something lighter to jig all day, or you can do a P7 that has more line capacity, a longer handle, more drag. It's totally up to you. But if you have three setups, you could do the P5, P7, and P8. And we already touched on the 608, but you can see that it has a really good bend, really good tip action, and overall, these rods are really good for the price. I think the MSRP for like 340 bucks. So if you wanna build out your jigging arsenal, they are straight wrap though. So if spiral wrap or acid wrap is something that you're looking for, it might not be the option for you. And then their heaviest rod would be the 609. You put your biggest reel on here, it could be a P8 with a 100 pound test, or if you have a bigger reel than a P8, put it on this rod and you can definitely winch in the fish using this rod if you wanna put the hurting on the fish. All right, so last up, we have Jigging Master Three King Special Rods. For your medium setup, I have the 60BM. So as you can see, these rods have a decent backbone with decent tip. It's, uh, it's in the middle. I'd say this rod's stiffer than the 608. So if you want something more parabolic, 
I would say the 608 and the 6004 are a little bit more parabolic than this rod. And then last up for your rods, we have the 6CBH. This is the first rod that we touched up on the full setups. This is the stiffest rod out of the bunch. This, is, this rod's comparable to the Black Hole 450 or the Phoenix Megalodon 609 or the UC 6005. They all like are around the same class. Although this and the Cape Cod 450, they're probably the stiffest one out of the bunch. And the 609, 609 is pretty stiff. You can always bump up to the Black Hole 550 gram because the, they put more nanocarbon in that one. So if you want something that's a little bit more um, heavy duty than the heavy rods that I've mentioned, definitely keep your eyes peeled on the blanks. They should be restocking students. So everywhere that sells Black Hole, you can come in and see if that's the right rod for you. So next up in the video, we're gonna be talking about the jigs that I normally use. In the videos, you can normally see me fishing this. It's a Wiggle Rider 300 gram. I, I fish these in like every single one of my videos. You guys definitely seen this jig. This one produced for me really good this year and last year. I normally use a blue pink and I also switch it out with a Maiwashi, but generally the 300 gram Wiggle Rider really works for me. I get bit on the pump and on the fall. It's a really versatile jig and it flutters a lot, so you get a lot of action. And the cool thing about Nature Boys is they're made out of iron, so they're not a lead jig. They fall a little differently, and because iron is less dense than lead, they fall a little differently. So these jigs are a really good addition to your arsenal, but they're kind of expensive, so I wouldn't load up on these jigs too much. The lead jigs are definitely more cost-effective if you want to build out your whole jig setup. But if you have one of these in your tackle box, you can't go wrong. Next up, we have the smaller wiggle riders. You know, the 265 works really good too. The smaller ones like the 190, the 160, they work really good during the daytime. The swim rider too, if you need something that's long, it has a lot of action on the pump. So if you want to get bit good on the pump, these jigs work really good on the pump. And a deep robber, if you want to fish really deep, that thing, um, once you're at depth, it's actually easier to jig up when they're heavy jigs than um, a normal lead jig. And they got the Swim Rider shorts too. They have a lot of different ones, but if you guys are into that short and stubby jigs, these are short and stubby and they work really good too this year. Same thing with the Spin Rider Deep, same concept. They're just short and stubby jigs. So those are really good. Um, swim birds for the daytime, they're really good at fishing at an angle. So if you're drifting a lot or you want to cast it out and work your jig back at an angle, these jigs are actually designed to be worked at an angle. So that uh, notion that there should be no angle in your line when you're jigging, these jigs you actually do want to have that angle. Another really good jig company is West Coast Jiggers. They make a bunch of jigs. They have these KB jigs that everybody knows. If you went on the boat, you definitely seen these, but whether it be the crew fishing it or the passengers fishing it, these are really good as well. KB is uh, one that's really popular and also the HD. As you can see, it's so popular that the entire HD lineup at Evic is sold out, but they have a jig back there. I can show you what it looks like. Those are really good for the price. And these are cheaper than Nature Boys. So if you want to load up, you can definitely load up on the West Coast Zigger stuff. These work really, really good. Um, on my last trip where you guys saw me catch the, all the bluefin, it was on the Nature Boys 300 gram Wiggle Rider and it was on the 350 gram HD from West Coast Jiggers. So the jigs that I'm telling you right now are proven winners. I've caught a bunch of fish on it and don't take my word for it. If you catch anybody at the landing and ask them if they know West Coast Jiggers, they probably do. Nature Boys is a little bit more niche, but you've seen it in my videos, you know it works. Also really good for daytime. If you want a good daytime jig is the West Coast Jiggers a speedy jig. It looks like a little flat, kind of like a leaf jig. This works really good for the daytime. The 150, and uh, if it's too, if the current's too much for the 150, you can get away with the 200 gram. Same thing with the MK jigs. They're really good day and night. Um, these have been uh, really popular this year as well. The MK jig, all sizes. If you need something lighter, they have light jigs all the way up to really heavy jigs so find your style and see what the current prefers if you can get away with a light jig do it if the current's a little bit ripping and you need something that's a little heavier go with a heavier jig you know adjust it based on the current but it's best if you fish a lighter jig because it's less um, stress on you it's easier to jig up a lighter jig so definitely take a look at west coast jiggers and nature boys cb1 also makes really good jigs the c1 semi-long the, it's really hard to find because they're a smaller jig manufacturer in Japan, but Evic has a selection of them. The C1 Semi-Long, the regular C1, and the MB1. 
This is the MB1 right here. This is really popular this year for the daytime fish, the MB1. If you can find it in uh, like around 180 grams, 150 grams to like around that, it's really good for your daytime stuff. So definitely take a look at CB1 as well. Another really good jig if you want to find something low profile is the Chotels. As you can see, this is a 300 gram jig and it's a very small 300 gram jig. The Wiggle Rider is like probably, probably like four inches longer than this. So definitely if you want something short and stubby, check out the Chotels. The 200 grams, 250s, 300s, they all work good for the bluefin. And now that we're done talking about jigs, let's go see what I would do to rig up these rods and reels. So right here for your braid, I was talking about the Veravas 10x10. This is the P6 line, the 85 pound test, the one that I've been always talking about. This is the 8 strand version. They also sell the 9 strand version. So it's a little bit more expensive, but I've been fishing the 8 strand version this whole time and I really like it. If you want to splurge and pick up the 9 strand, you can definitely do that. It's a newer technology and it's actually stronger. Their P6 with the 9 strand is 90 pound breaking strength and this one is 85. So. You got options and the way that I would do it is I would go from braid to mono, no crimp, um, just tie an FG knot or an RP knot. There's plenty of videos online on YouTube on how to tie those knots so I'm not going to review it in the, this video. But sizes like 140, that's what I normally start off with. I catch like pretty big fish on 140. Um, if you want to up it to a more bite guard, you can go with 180. But at that point, you're just going for bite guard because you're not going to be able to break 140 pound test. You're not going to be able to break a 100 pound test. You're really just going for more bite guard, uh, more resistance uh, to rubbing against the fish or getting chewed off, you know. But 180 would be like the heavy one I do. You could also do 220 uh, for your heaviest reel. But if you just have a medium or a heavy rod, I like to start off with 140 or maybe 150. And then something in between, if the fish are being a little finicky, I've noticed that 120 works really good too when the fish are just not trying to bite. Like even though it's nighttime, I do notice that sometimes the diameter of line, it's not necessarily that the fish see the line, it's more of how the line affects the jig's action. If you pick like a lighter diameter line, it's gonna affect the jig less and it's gonna make it flutter a little better. So don't sleep on the 120 at night and to that matter, and you can also fish the 100 pound test at night too. That's probably the lightest I would go at night, but this is a good daytime line as well if you wanna rig it up for daytime. 100 pound at day, or if you wanna have it on your lights up at night, that's totally acceptable too. So this would be probably the lightest I would go. You could go 80 if you're fishing those like tungsten jigs or something and you want something that doesn't affect the jig as much, you can go 80 pound, but nothing lighter than 80 pound. Fish might run too much, so I would stop at 80 pound test, but this is a really good uh, medium option if you want to do something in between. Coming over to how I want to rig these um, jigs. This is a four centimeter Mavaroshi hook. This is a four aught and this one comes with the flash already pre-tied. This is one of my favorite hooks out of the box. Actually, let me take that back. This is my favorite hook if you want to buy it straight out of the bag because what this is, is it has a really good hook on it. The cord's really good. It's built really good. It's made in Japan. so. Like pretty much all the stuff we buy nowadays, like all the jigging stuff, they all come from Asia. So Japan really got their jigging game locked down. So Sutek is a really good brand to buy your pre-tied hooks from. And they have like five aughts, they have different size centimeter lines. For like these jigs that I'm recommending right now, like the Wiggle Rider 300 gram, I would go with like a four centimeter four aught hook. So if you guys are planning on rigging it up, a four centimeter four aught hook is what you want. But if you want to do the West Coast Jiggers HD, and this applies to the 300 gram KB2, four centimeter, four out, that's what I would go. If you want some uh, hook for the HD, I would go with the four out Mabaroshi double. These ones are really good too, because if you put two on the bottom, as opposed to one on top and one on the bottom, um, the fish bite, bite down on it. And if you're lucky, both these hooks, they're gonna, get, uh, they're gonna sink into the bluefin's mouth and it'll give you a really good bite uh, to landing ratio if you use the double on the bottom with these shorter stubby jigs. But on the longer ones, I would totally do a top and bottom hook because a lot of people, they say don't fish top hook. I get that because you bring in the fish sideways and it's dangerous once you land the fish. Once you get enough experience and you fish the top hook, what I've noticed is, cause the fish, they like to bite the jig at the top as much as the bottom, you know? They, like, I've, some of the fish on my last video, I've hooked them just on the top hook. The bottom hook wasn't even stuck to the fish. So definitely the top hook will increase your um, uh, hookup ratio, but then definitely consider that you might be bringing your fish sideways, or maybe that it's dangerous when they gap the fish and now your jig's swinging around with a cyst hook, you know, swinging. You might catch someone's booth or something, or worse, it get into someone's hand. So. 
definitely look out for that. If you're a little bit more inexperienced, I would definitely just go with a double on the bottom, just so it's a little bit safer and you're not bringing it sideways. But once you feel confident, a bottom hook and a top hook will increase your hookup ratio. So definitely consider that as well. And then over here, this is the last thing we're gonna touch up on is uh, how you're gonna rig up these jigs. You know, I like to go with these monster split rings for like the West Coast Jigger stuff because they have a larger um, like, they have a larger ring at the bottom of the jig for you to tie, for you to attach your hook to. Um, the Jig and Master ones are really good too. If you want something from a brand you recognize, owner makes a really good ones. The Ultras, the number eight and the number seven. I will go with the number seven for most of my jigs. If you want something that's less likely to open up, a number eight. But these are actually cheaper than the owner ones. So I just fished the Jigging Master split rings because they're just cheaper than the owner ones. And I've never opened up a split ring using these. But if you're gonna be fishing the Nature Boy stuff, I would look into the uh, Nature Boys ones right here. I've been using this size seven from Nature Boys and it fits. Cause the thing with the Nature Boy jigs is they have a smaller ring on the bottom of the jig and on the top. So I've had issues trying to fit the owner ones and the monster split rings, the one from Jigging Master through. But even though I've gotten it through and it doesn't move, I've never had it open up on me. So if you don't have access to these Nature Boy split rings, I've used the larger split rings on it before and I haven't had it open up on me. And maybe it's just luck, but so far I haven't had any issues, but if you can get these, cause they're more flatter, they'll fit through the jigs better. And then last up, the solid ring. I would go with a welded solid ring because the other ones, like, like the owner ones, they're nice and all, but they have a, a little sharp edge on the side of the ring. And it's people have been known to lose a fish due to the not getting cut by the split ring. So definitely try to find something, like Spro makes some, Suteki makes some, where they're welded solid rings. So they're rounded on the edges, so they won't cut your line. So. I would try to shy away from these. I use these, I'm being a hypocrite because I do use these and um, I haven't had too many issues, but I have blown up two fish um, where I just got my knot back because these cut the line. So once I get out, once I use all my supply of this stuff, I'll be switching over to the solid welded rings because I've seen much better success using solid welded rings than these ones because I, I, I fish them side to side and you know, that's just, that's just what I've noticed out on the ocean. So that pretty much wraps up this entire video. We've covered rods, we covered reels, we covered entire setups, we covered line, mono, pretty much everything that you need to get involved in this type of style of fishing, uh, we covered it. So definitely leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions. And special thanks to evic.com for letting me film at their store. We were able to see a lot of cool stuff here and they definitely have more stuff than I could show you at home. So definitely that's a plus, thank you evic.com. But that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, peace out.